Hello viewers. In this lecture, we will learn the derivation of the fractional trapezoidal formula to approximate Riemann level fractional integral. Let me advise you that before you watch this lecture, you are requested to watch first and third part of lecture number 10 and revise the classical trapezoidal rule from classical calculus and classical numerical analysis, the subjects that we study in our undergraduate program. So the Riemann level fractional integral is defined by equation 1, wherein the term x minus s whole power alpha minus 1 is what we call kernel of the integral. And this integral has a coefficient 1 upon gamma of alpha. This definition is also known as left Riemann level fractional integral. So we will learn the derivation, the step-by-step -step derivation for the fractional trapezoidal formula. So for that, we have considered a function whose domain is 0 to b and the range is set of real numbers. We are going to choose n plus 1 grid points and hence n intervals. So you can see here in the green color, our lower limit is 0 while the upper limit of the integral is b which is also equal to xn. So lower limit x0 is 0, upper limit xn is b. So what we are going to do, we are going to replace x by xn in RL fractional integral, the definition 1. So if you do so, you will obtain equation number 2. Now, in equation number 2, I have broken the integral into pieces, as you can see, from 0 to x1. The second integral x1 to x2 and keep doing so. The last one is from xk to xk plus 1. And in equation number 3, I have used the summation notation. So if you open it, expand it, you will be back to the previous equation. So equation 3 is now written in compact form. So we know that on each subinterval, the function in our previous lectures was being approximated by a constant. Now this time the function f of s or the function f of x in the Riemann level fractional integral is being approximated by a piecewise linear function which is now given in equation number 4. And let me tell you equation number 4 is the is obtained using the concept of Lagrange's interpolation technique wherein a polynomial is being passed through two points. So if you look at the topic Lagrange's interpolation technique in numerical analysis, then you will come to know how we can write down equation number four. So this is a polynomial where the polynomial is passing through two distinct points. So equation four is obtained. Now, as you can see in equation number 5, this is the definition for the Riemann level integral where I had replaced x by xn and I used the summation notation. So here, this approximated function f tilde of x is now replaced by this piecewise linear function as you can now see in equation number 6. Okay, so this function f tilde of x is now the right hand side from equation number 4. If you do so, you will have this equation number 6. Now I have expanded equation number 6. By expansion, I mean keep putting the values of k. So when you put x is, k is equal to 0, you will get some term. Similarly, keep doing so until k is equal to n minus 1. So I am going to expand this equation number 1 and then here in this slide we will have this equation number 7. So 
see carefully what we have done. The first integral is from 0 to x1. And then we have some terms. Integrand has two terms basically. Look at the second integral from x1 to x2. And the integrand has again two terms. Look at the third integral that is from x2 to x3. It has also two terms. And keep doing so. The last one, as you can see, from xn minus 1 to xn, again, the integrand has two terms. So this equation number 7 is obtained after the expansion of equation 6. Now, in equation number 8, you can see that the first integral in equation 7 was having two terms. So I have separated it. The first term with this integral from 0 to x1 and the second term with the same integral 0 to x1. Likewise, over here, you can see the integral from x1 to x2, the first term, and also the integral from x1 to x2 and with the second term. Keep doing so until the last integral. Now, you might have uh, wondered that why I have changed the colors. You can see the first term is highlighted with the red color. The last term is highlighted with the blue color, while the intermediate terms are highlighted with the green color. Actually, I would like to remind you the classical trapezoidal rule that we study in numerical analysis. If you recall, that rule also has a similar sort of a structure. The term containing initial or the first functional value appears once. So same is happening here. And the term that has the last value f of xn, that also appears once. So we have the similar kind of thing here. While the intermediate values appear twice. So same is happening here. Look at this. You have this f of x1 and this integral, which is from 0 to x1. And again, f of x1 comes over here with the integral from x1 to x2. So this is the reason I have assigned different colors. So we obtain equation number 8. I hope you understood it. Now equation 8 can be written in this compact form, where you can see that when k is 0, this red color term I have separated. When k is equal to n, the blue color term, the last one is written. And for the intermediate values, I mean when k is from 1 to n minus 1, you will have all of these intermediate values that can be written as a sum of these two integrals. Once again, if you open these things, you will be back to equation number 8 as you had seen in the previous slide. Okay. So now, we have to see what will happen if we integrate this red color expression. Likewise, integration of these two green color expressions and what is the integration of this last blue color integral. So it is very easy to obtain these integrals by using any symbolic software, for example, Maple or Mathematica, you can integrate all of these terms that appear on the screen right now. So let me take the first one with the red color when k is equal to 0. So you can see when k is 0, I will have this integral where I have integrated it and then I have obtained the integration as now highlighted on the screen. So it is very simple. If you Even if you solve it by hand, you can easily obtain this highlighted expression. Now when you take the lower and upper limit, so apply these limits. After applying the upper limit, you will have the expression now highlighted. Likewise, if you apply the lower limit, you will have this expression, which is now highlighted. So upper limit minus lower limit, simplify these two. The simplification will yield the terms that you now see at the top of the slide. So as you know that xn can easily be replaced by nh. 
it should be written as x0 plus nh, but since x0 is 0, so I have actually neglected that. Likewise, x1 is actually equal to x0 plus h, but x0 once again is 0, so x1 can be replaced by h. So if you substitute these two things on the right hand side of this equation, the above equation, the very first one, you will obtain the equation that now I am going to highlight. So in this way, we have come to know that when k is 0, when k is 0, we have the equation number 11. So little simplification in the previous term will give you equation number 11, wherein I have used one of the properties of the gamma function, as you can now see on the screen. This property is being used. So we have obtained equation number 11 when k is 0. Now let me show you what happens when k is n. So when k is n, you have this integral to be evaluated right from one of our previous slides where I had shown you the three integrals. So it is easy to integrate this term between xn minus 1 and xn. So if you integrate, even you integrate by hand, it will be easily integrated while Keep in mind that xn minus xn minus 1 is actually equal to h, which is the constant step size. So we have obtained the integral, the value of the integral given in the third part that was highlighted with the blue color. Now, similarly, when k is between 1 and n minus 1, the intermediate two integrals, similarly, those integrals can be evaluated and if you evaluate those two integrals, you will have equation number 13. So, we have now completed the evaluation of all the integrals that were being appeared in equation number 9. So, now, if you combine the results of these integrals, I mean equation number 11, 12, and 13, you will have the expression that is now being highlighted. You will have this expression. Where a k n, if you substitute over here in the approximation of the Riemann level integral, altogether you will have the formula what we call fractional trapezoidal method to approximate the Riemann level fractional integral. So this is the formula that is now derived in this lecture step by step. So this is one of the most frequently used formulas called fractional trapezoidal method to approximate RL fractional integral of order alpha. This is very important formula and will be helpful in our upcoming lectures when we need to drive the numerical schemes, especially adams bashforth molten method to solve the initial value problems, the fractional order initial value problems. So that's it. This is all about the derivation of the fractional trapezoidal method to approximate RL fractional integral. I welcome your comments and the questions in the comment box. Thank you so much for watching the lecture.